What's up guys, Zach Man doing another video today. Um, it's kind of a little weekly update. We're gonna go through it real quick. Obviously, if you've seen the last videos, uh, we're just gonna kind of do a quick summary of where we've been. Um, so again, back in February of uh, 2020, February 4th, um, I deposited uh, $23.50 into an account, um, or into one of my accounts that I already had. And basically, yeah, we kind of traded it using a simple concept of trading um, after years and years and dollars and dollars of failure and failure. Um, yeah, and everything's been pretty positive so far. I mean, yeah, we have some ups and downs, but that's, you know, not every trade's going to be a winner. Pretty much simple, plain Jane, done. Um, but positive news is, is that we're making money, so we're being profitable. So again, deposit right here. $23.50. Close trade. That means I profited $1,590. So I have a balance, an equity of $1,615.95. So pretty good. I mean, if you look at this, uh, don't really look at these stats too much, but <clears throat> I know one of the stats that I was trying to work on was the uh, profitability percentage as far as uh, trying to get that ratio up. Um, Long positions, one is about 60%. Uh, lost trades, total percentage is 36.79. Not sure if I'm reading that correctly or not. Short positions, 65%. Profitable trades, 63%. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I am reading. All right, yeah. So, and here we go. Yeah. So, okay, this would be the one. So, 63% of my trades are profitable. 36% of them is not. So, so that's pretty good. I mean, it's better than 50, so I mean, that means we're making money, profits, profits, profits. Um, so kind of been working on some, you know, different stop losses, stuff like that, trying to get better entries. But again, my, my schedule is hectic. I can't sit at my computer all day, um, at least until I'm under quarantine, which could happen pretty much any time now. So then that would give me lots of time, which then I can actually sit down and actually go through a whole or try to. Uh, I'll do a video of me actually doing the trades and kind of seeing what I look at, which I'll do here in a little bit, but the market's closed, but it doesn't matter. So, so this is, uh, this right here is when I started, uh, after I did my little research and kind of studied more basically. But if we actually look back at this whole account, so this is when I actually made this account it was back in, so was it October 30th? I deposited $10 and 40 cents. My whole point of this was to try and I used a different strategy back then um, to make it grow like I am now, which obviously it's working. And these ones, this is my failure option. I did have, have I've had many counts throughout the years too that have all freaking not good at all. It's just been shit. So this will actually show you. So this is the whole, this is, I went back to the very beginning. So this is when I created the account um, right here. $10.40 is what I deposited in. As you can see, epic failure. Um, deposited again another ten dollars, and epic failure. Deposited one hundred forty dollars. This is when I kind of gave up and said, you know, I just can't do it. Maybe more money will do it. And obviously that was epic failure. So in let's see, that's December fifth. I deposited one hundred forty dollars, and pretty much lost it all. I mean, I had some good, you know, here and there, whatever, blah blah blah. Uh, but straight down to the point, uh, January. So you can kind of see just loss, 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 negative, 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 negative. So wasn't a very, is this pretty much enough to get me by? So I, that pretty much kept on going until, where's my $23? So on January 7th, I stopped trading, did some research for about a good month, I'd say, 30-day research, kind of went back to it. Really, I don't, I got a free trial with the Amazon Kindle, went through a bunch of books, read the books every day. I was studying, watching videos, reading books about Forex trading, why people do it. Um, I've Even some YouTube video people, uh, Telegram people, I kind of watched what they did, trying to find the simplest ways to, to trade. And that's when I did it. I, I wasn't going to do a demo account because demo accounts, I get it, but at the same time, I don't because I've done demo accounts. I've done demo accounts on all this previous strategies. And it was awesome. I was making money. And then as soon as I go to live, fucking everything would go down. So I'm like, well, no. And I went to live. 
just because you know it's better to start with a small amount and then kind of use smaller lot sizes so you get the emotions of the losses and the gains which i've already experienced that but i think live accounts are just way better we got you don't even have to trade them you can um if you go to the actual thing you can be like okay i like what i see here so i'm just gonna whoops insert uh an arrow so let's say okay buy let's see like this well, obviously this is going to be a sale so go back arrow down so like oh this looks like a sale so boom i put an arrow sell and then where would i want my stop loss to be okay well it looks like we got some resistance up here so i put this boom stop loss where would i want to take profit oh right there and you just change that to a different color and then there you go so you, you don't you don't need to necessarily trade a live account but you can use it oops that shit's about to get deleted here. That's all right. Uh. Ah. Well, whatever. That arrow's going to stay there for now. Um, but anyway, so you don't have to do it that way anyways. But um, right now, the market, like I said, the market's closed right now. I just want to just do, do a quick video rundown of what the kind of a little preview of the week here. So basically, uh, looking at the USD yen right now. Um, so obviously we got some resistance right here. Um, we're kind of touching that. Look down taller, or smaller time frames. So we're kind of hitting that. Um, so we could see it kind of bounce up and down here. Obviously the OPV is up. So the trend is obviously a buy. Um, we got a gap there that got filled. So we're just going to kind of, I'm not going to do too much with that one. That one's not really looking very good to me. Um, it all depends on what happens. I know there's, like I said, this whole coronavirus has got everything all, the market's just going to go crazy. So really, the, the, the it's more of fundamentals than it is technical analysis right now. But um, as far as the U.S. stuff goes, because you just never know. Because, again, we have this major trend line for the, I used it, the higher time frames, obviously. So I'm going to kind of watch that. The one, so you got to be careful with the U.S. right now, the dollar, as far as that goes with everything. Because uh, you just never know things are going crazy. Um, the euro um, is obviously in an uptrend right now as well. So we had a, you know, kind of hit here, here, it's going up. So I can, I would just presume this is going to go higher. So if we go down to the lower time frames, once the market opens, we'll kind of know better. I'm not going to do any trading tonight. I'm going to wait until Monday. Um, obviously, it broke through this trend line. So we're going to have to wait to see if it retests down here. So I'm not going to make any trades on that one. Yeah, it broke right through that. Yeah, so now we're making... Well, zoom out here. So we got a higher high here, or higher low, I should say. Lower low, lower low, higher low. So depending on what this five minute, I mean, obviously in the market, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it could start down here, it could start up there. I don't know. Um, but that's just kind of how we, how I determine my trades is I just kind of start at the very top, see where the trend's at, and then we just kind of lower it down from there to make the trades. Like Euro, um, Australian dollar right now we're kind of look I'm looking at that one I was actually in that on Friday I wish I would have stayed a little bit longer to catch the, the ride but I just kind of cut my loss or not losses I cut cut my profits short I did profit on it but I wish I would have stayed in longer but you can kind of see if we go down the smaller time frames how it is sticking with this trend line right here so depending on how it opens and bounces like I said I'm not going to do anything I'm going to wait until tomorrow just to see what it does, basically. But uh, LPV obviously shows that it's in an uptrend. Obviously, we broke the trend line right here. And right here is the major trend line as far as where it's going. So we'll see where that ends up. I like how that's setting up again. Um, that one, not too much. Not too much there. That one's a little bit. So this one kind of broke out as well. Like I said, the euro is kind of breaking out right now. Uh, for the most part, just kind of kind of keep an eye on that. Like I said, hopefully, I mean, uh, if a quarantine does happen, I have to shut down all my businesses, and we'll just kind of do some actual day trading. Like obviously, the Australian dollar is going down, so this looks like a good selling point. Maybe just kind of zoom back to smaller. T yep. Okay, so obviously it broke through that trend. Broke through that trend. And now it's touching the trend. It might be wicking. Five minutes kind of showing. So it could actually potentially hit up here for a higher low before continuing down. Um, but as far as the OPV, that's a good indicator. That obviously, the trend is down. 
Um, I do have divergence for the RSI and divergence for the MACD. I don't really use them too often. Um, more likely on the smaller time frames, just if they match up, like we have divergence here, divergence there. Once it touches, you can kind of see how we're obviously going to see the downtrend. So that's kind of nice. I kind of use it for the smaller time frames. I do not use it for the larger time frames. Um, just because, like I said, obviously once that OPV breaks the uh, moving averages, which I use a 200, 365 day one, and then the other one is the 100 moving average on the OPV, just so I can kind of get an idea of the trend of where it's going, obviously, because you can kind of see how once it surpasses all of them, how it's going up. And then once it kind of breaks through all of them, you start to see that downtrend, which obviously you can see the lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower, and all that stuff. So um, obviously this isn't going to make everybody rich. This isn't a get rich quick scheme. You know, it takes work and effort and timing is everything. It really is. So a little bit of luck. Like I said, the Australian is dollar is kind of weak right now. Obviously we have another one right here. This is the Australian versus the Japanese yen. Again, it's breaking through that. So I'll be looking to take some trades into this one in the next day or so. Yeah, I really like what's, I mean, it's going to, yeah. I have a feeling that this thing's going to go down. Obviously, it did have, let's see, let's zoom into a higher time frame for, oh, it's pretty close. I mean, for a monthly right here is some untested support, but it did break through that. So, I mean, we do, but it did break through this trend line, and obviously it is a downtrend, so I'll be keeping an eye on this anyways throughout the week. So basically, yeah, the ones to be trading right now are the Euro and the Aussie and maybe the Kiwi because that's part of the, that kind of goes hand in hand with the Aussie as well, the Australian dollar, yep. So to kind of keep an eye on those, if you guys were to take trades today and you're listening to this, just keep an eye on those ones. Ooh, not much for a trend line. Let's try refresh. Nope. Smaller time frame, maybe. There we go. Yeah, so it's kind of like I said, we're in, definitely in a downtrend. And then the pound, obviously, is another downtrend, it looks like here. So you just got to look for good entries. Like I said, use taller or smaller time frames, make a trend line, and just follow it. And it's pretty simple. I mean, if, especially if you have the time to do it all day, you know, that's pretty simple, guys. So that's all I got. Um, hopefully, like I said, sometime next week, uh, depending on what happens with this whole virus, corona crap, um, I actually have time to sit down and maybe even do a video of live trading and all that stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Happy trading. Let's make some profits. Thanks, guys. Micro profits out.